Hi guys, welcome to my uh, unboxing video of something that I'm quite excited to get. Um, this is the new Intel Skull Canyon NUC. Um, it's got some long incomprehensible part number. Uh, NUC 6i7KYK. Rolls off the tongue. Um, I've been particularly looking forward to this machine because I'm quite interested in low power and sort of portable machines and quiet machines. Um, I'm not sure this one will be quiet, but. Uh, this is kind of a bit of a game changer for Intel when it comes to their NUCs. Because the NUCs have always been something that we look down on as it's low power, it's small, it's cheap. Um, this isn't cheap. This is $650 with no hard drive and no memory in it. Um, but you do get a, a quad core Intel uh, Core i7 processor with their Iris Pro integrated graphics. So they're still integrated graphics, but um, high end of integrated graphics. So. They're making some big claims about it. Um, don't necessarily buy all those claims in terms of uh, it being a good gaming machine. Uh, but gaming aside, uh, I'm pretty interested in it. So it's only just arrived. Um, I haven't opened it yet. So let's take a look. Um, first off, the box, really nice, um, quite classy. Uh, nice matte black finish with this sort of gold uh, foil printing on it. Uh, on the front, obviously just Intel NUC. On the back, uh, you can see you've got a picture of the NUC itself, the ports on the front and the ports on the back, in fact. <coughs> um, on the side, it tells you uh, what you need, to basically, to finish it off, which says DDR4 SODIMS up to 32 gigs of RAM and uh, a 22 by 42 or 22 by 80 M2 SSD. It'll support two SSD drives and, of course, the operating system. And it does come with a three-year limited warranty. Um, on the other side, just gives you a bit more uh, information. A mini PC kit for intense gameplay and powerful workloads. We'll see, my benchmark it. Uh, Intel Iris Pro Graphics, so that's the headline item on this. Uh, Thunderbolt 3 uh, port supports DisplayPort 1.2 and USB 3.1. <coughs> now, that's pretty interesting because one of the reasons I actually bought this is Razer have an external GPU dock for their latest laptops called the Razer Core. And in that, you can put a full-size desktop graphics card. But it's not proprietary. It connects to the laptop via Thunderbolt 3, which is a 40 gigabit uh, connection. And this machine is compatible with it. Intel and Razer work together. So you should be able to run a full-sized, full-power desktop graphics card with this small little machine. So this could be game-changing, uh, quite literally, when it comes to desktop machines. Because I do look at even my sort of compact... Um, and the XT uh, Mini Tower, it, it still seems big, and it, it, there's a lot of empty space inside it, and it just reminds me of back in the 90s when I was building tower PCs, really. Um, I feel like we should have moved on from there. Um, anyway, moving on, it also got a HDMI, HDMI sorry, 2.0 port, four USB 3.0 ports, one of which can charge your items while the NUC is off, um, a stereo headphone combo jack, dual band wireless 802.11ac, latest standard, uh, and Bluetooth 4.2, again, latest standard. Um, there's also a mini display port 1.2 connector and an SD card slot. Um, they also mention a thermally optimized chassis. We'll see what that means, I guess, in a minute. And of course, the Core i7 processor that I mentioned earlier. So let's open it up and take a look. Nice box. Not too heavy, by the way, the box, just in case you're wondering. Um, so immediately, we're presented with the machine itself. Um, let's put that to one side for a minute <coughs> and take a look. So we get the world's smallest uh, Core i7 sticker, which you can put on your NUC if you want. Um, what else we got? A lot of documentation, safety information and caution that nobody cares about. Um, regulatory information that nobody cares about. Uh, a manual, which is one of these horrible fold-out posters. Um, I miss books. Basically gives you information. Let's have a look here. I hate these things. So yeah, basically gives you an overview of the ports that you've got, um, shows you how to take it apart, where the two hard drive slots are, where the two memory slots are, uh, the compatibility in terms of um, SD, uh, sorry, SSD drive size, uh, and also they mentioned some of the accessories you get in the box, which includes the VESA mounting plate mounting this to the back of a monitor, um, or with probably another adapter, I'm guessing, uh, a TV. Uh, and of course, the power brick is external, um, given the size of it. So, and apparently you don't use a drill on it. Not 
sure why you would. Let's get rid of that. Fold that later. Um, so else in the box. Let's have a look. We get the. Okay, we get another top. Um, the standard top has a skull logo on it. Uh, in this piece here. Sorry. In this piece here. Uh, if you don't like that, um, obviously you can replace it with this plain one. Maybe put your company's logo there or something. Um, I actually quite like the skull, but I can understand that some people wouldn't. <coughs> uh, here's the aforementioned vest and mounting plate. Uh, fairly straightforward. Power brick, let's see how heavy. Uh, quite slim, quite a nice finish. Um, it's not apple, but it's quite nice. Um, Lengthwise on the cord, let's see what they gave us. Hate short power cords. So I mean, it's pretty bit it's pretty long, so it's not too bad. Uh, in terms of wattage, what do we have? It's made by Delta, as most of them are. It's 19 volts, 6.3 amps. Um, and it's pulls two amps. It's 100 to 240 volts. Okay. So that's, that's about 50% more power than my little Z box uh, from Zotac uses. So around about, around about 60 watts, 65 watts, something like that. Not too bad. Um, what else do we get in here? So we get the power cable, which goes to the power brick, obviously. This is very short by the look of it. No expense spared there, or no expense went to rather. Um, ah, they give you a Allen key and also some darker screws, I believe, for the top. Uh, the top is attached by Allen screws, I can see. So let me uh, just deal with this here. <coughs> Let's take a look at the machine itself. Interesting. So it's quite a nice finish. You've, you've got a sort of matte mat here, and this is actually a fairly cheap looking glossy uh, finish. In the photos, I had assumed that this was some sort of see through cooling mesh. It's not, it's just printed. Um, it looks quite smart, uh, despite the glossiness. Um, I quite like it. Uh, I think in this pack, they've given you basically six Allen head screws and a dark finish if you prefer that to this silver finish. Um, I'll be swapping those out. I don't like the silver ones, so that's quite cool. Here's the skull that I mentioned before. Um, again, you could swap it out with the plain one. I'll give you right here, whatever your preference may be. Um, like I said, I quite like the skull. It goes on all their sort of extreme products from Intel, including their SSDs. And if you sort of pay attention, it's actually kind of like a circuit. The little, cir the little circles here, like your solder mounting pads on a, on a circuit board. So I think it's kind of cool. I think it gives it a bit of character. Um, Planes would be a little bit boring. Um, in terms of ports, what do we got? So we've got an SD card reader. We've got a USB 3.1. So the yellow one will be the one that stays on while the machine is powered off. So this is the one that you plug your phone into if you want to charge it. Um, you've also got your headphone socket. There's uh, an infrared receiver. So if you wanted to use this as the world's most overpowered HTPC, you could. Um, and the power switch, which is fine, doesn't feel cheap. Um, on the back, got the power in the socket. Uh, we've also got a uh, optical uh, audio output socket, a one gigabit Ethernet port, a pair of um, USB three ports, um, or two two point one actually. Um, you've also got your Thunderbolt three, sorry, your Thunderbolt three, um, the HDMI, and your actually mini Display port. Interestingly enough, um, thankfully I've got the right cable. In terms of venting, um, you've basically got vents on each end. So it's obviously going to basically suck and blow through. Uh, there's a small vent on the back. So it's either going to be something like this or like this. It's sort of going to blow forward. So something like that. Um, I guess we'll, we'll see more when we open it up. So on the top, let's take the top off before we take the bottom and just have a quick look at what's under here. Okay, so 
Oh, it took the top off. Comes off pretty easy. And underneath, let's see what we have. Okay, so we've got some sort of headers here, which I believe are for replaceable tops. Some of the earlier NUCs um, offered different replaceable tops by third parties, which included additional USB 2 ports. So I believe um, that's what these are. I never actually opened up one of the original NUCs. Um, other than that, there isn't much to see uh, on this side, basically. Um, sure that's the, that's the uh, Wi-Fi antenna over here. Um, and this is just the power switch. So not much of it, any uh, excitement under there. So let's put this back on. So what I'm doing with this, uh, the reason I'm sort of excited about this machine is I intend to buy the Razer Core, uh, the GPU dock, when Razer actually get around to finally shipping it. Um, I think Razer have one of the worst track records when it comes to shipping products that they've announced. They announced them way too early. Uh, the Stargazer webcam, months and months ago they announced that, uh, if not a year I think. Uh, still can't get it. Um, and the same with the Razer Core, it was supposed to be shipping around about now, uh, or the end of April in fact, and it got delayed. And there's nothing on the website to tell you when it's shipping. Um, quite a lot of annoyed customers uh, who've bought the laptop that goes with it, um, and they don't have their Razer Core. So Razer are not good at managing customers' expectations, I'll tell you that much. Good marketing department but terrible at managing expectations. So, but I am, anyway, I intend to get one when it finally does become available. And what I'm considering doing is either moving my 980 Ti into it and basically parting out Linnaean Hydra, my big PC, which I built what, nine months ago, I think, um, if this machine benchmarks the way that I hope it will. Now, it won't be as fast as Linnaean Hydra in, you know, CPU power, that's an eight core, four and a half gig. This is a uh, quad core um, running at a slower clock speed. But that might not matter because I've been doing a lot of my video encoding using the GPU. Um, and as we know for gaming, eight cores have no real benefit. So if it's close enough in performance of the things that I actually do, um, I will uh, part out my big PC and this will become my PC. The reason being that I can unplug it and I can put it in my bag and I can take it to work, or wherever I want, um, and bring it back. And it's much smaller and far lighter than even, I think even the MacBook Air is heavier than this. Um, so portability, great. Uh, portability, sorry. Um, so let me grab a screwdriver and we'll take this thing apart and uh, see what's inside. Okay, screwdriver in hand. So um, let's take a look inside the neck. I think these might even be captive screws by the look of it. Yeah, they are. Uh, big thumbs up, Intel. Captive screws. We like captive screws. release these clips uh, that are on the side here. So, okay, there's not a lot to it. <laughs> um, basically, you should be able to see, uh, here's the single um, cooling fan. I'm not sure what size that is, pretty small, um, which s s sort of suggests it's gonna be, you know, blowing pretty fast uh, and hence noisy something that I am concerned about, we'll see. If this thing's perfectly noisy, it'll be going back. Um, in addition, you've got your two um, SSD slots here and the two memory card, memory slots, sorry. Um, they do give you the extra screws for screwing down the, uh, the SSD drives. Um, so I actually have the memory and SSD drive to hand, so let's give that a go. Um, I decided to go with the Samsung uh, 950 Pro M2 SSD, it's the fastest thing on the market and it's 512 uh, gigs, so it's the biggest one I could get. I would have preferred a, a terabyte, but they don't do it, so it is what it is. Um, let's just take a look at this and basically see 
in here what we have. <coughs> It never seems to amaze me, you know, 512 gigs on something quite literally the size of a stick of gum. Um, and a read speed of over two and a half gigabytes per second. Um, pretty impressive. Okay, so on the slots, I don't believe there's any difference between them. Let's have a quick check on our sheet here. Um, it's a single 80 mil, so it should go in slot M2A, which is this one here. This is A, this is B. So, oh no, apparently you can put it in both. They don't seem to care. No mention is made as to if it's optimal in one versus the other. Oh well, in that case it's going to be going in slot A then, isn't it? So, let's just open the screw here. Uh, Memory-wise, um, I've gone with Crucial. Uh, if you watch my channel, particularly my Linnaean Hydra, Hydra build video, you'll know that I'm no fan of expensive high-speed RAM. I think it's a complete waste of money. Um, I've, you can pay up to double, and when I've benchmarked it, if you get one frame per second in games, you're lucky, and it seems to make no difference whatsoever in encoding speeds on video. Um, you can get some sort of artificial benchmarks to occasionally show some difference, but in the real world, it just doesn't do enough difference to justify the price increase. Um, so with that said, I've gone with uh, some Crucial memory. Um, I've used Crucial for years um, uh, in a business uh, on servers. And uh, this is a 32 gigabyte kit, which is the max this can take, two 16 gig sticks. And I paid $119 from Amazon, um, which is fantastic. So let's get this opened up. And Good. So let's put the top back on. Uh, it's help. I should mention that the base is helpfully labelled uh, front, basically down the bottom here. So double check. This is the front over here. Seems to go on. I don't think there's any magic to it, as far as I can tell. So, let's just tighten this up. And then um, when I've got it back together, we'll get it powered up. And uh, I'll see, it'll be another video, because it's going to take me a few days to benchmark this. Um, I'll run the benchmarks and give you guys my opinion. So yeah, um, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you can see the follow-up to this. You're going to want to see the numbers, I'm sure. Um, and see if it's all that uh, it's cracked up to be, because Intel have been spending a lot of money um, advertising this thing on YouTube, magazines, pretty much everywhere you look. So they're obviously quite uh, keen for it to be a success. Um, so yeah, nice device. I would say it's probably about the weight of a MacBook Air 11 inch, something like that. Um, Basically, it's, it's, it's not heavy at all. Um, definitely very transportable. Looks good. So stay tuned.